Welcome to the program. On today's episode, I'm going to look at five possible reasons that might be causing the market sell-off that we've seen over the past month. Also, the Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem, he says that last week's federal budget isn't going to have a material impact on the bank's strategies. The EV market is going through a very rough patch. Shares of Tesla, for example, are down 42% year-to-date. We're going to look at what's happening in that space. And Bitcoin has completed its halving event. What is it? What might it mean to the price of cryptocurrencies? Today is Monday, April the 22nd, 2024. Let's get started with today's top stories. The stock market rally in 2024 has been fueled mostly by economic optimism. Seems that it may be coming to a halt here. And this mostly is concerning uh, things like rising inflation and the timing of the potential Federal Reserve actions. That's a big thing on the list right now. If you're reading a sample of opinions as to what's causing this, you're going to see a few similarities that experts are saying are having the biggest impact on the market. I'm going to have a look at a few of those in this video here. First off, I want to start with the strong economic data that we're continuing to see come out of predominantly the U.S., including healthy job growth. We're seeing increased consumer spending. And this has raised concerns about the Fed's timeline for interest rate cuts, and it is impacting investor expectations. The markets, remember, are forward-looking. So as a result of this, we've seen traders who have adjusted their projections for rate cuts, now anticipating a later start and fewer cuts compared to the earlier forecasts. Then we have the International Monetary Fund's upgraded forecast for U.S. economic growth. That reflects confidence in the economy's strength, but it highlights the challenge that the Fed will have in uh, managing inflationary pressures. We've seen bond yields once again surging and investors are bracing for perhaps this extended period of elevated interest rates that also is having negative influence on investment decisions across various asset classes. Then we have escalating geopolitical tensions, including the new conflict that we're seeing uh, between uh, Iran and Israel, and that's added to market volatility, and that has put a focus on the geopolitical risks that could impact all of the global markets. And finally, on this topic, we've seen that although gold prices are down a little bit this morning, we've seen strong returns so far in 2024. And when you look at gold futures, we've seen an increased demand there. Why is this? Well, investors are looking at a hedge uh, against a potential geopolitical instability, continued inflationary pressures. So these are just a few of the factors that have uh, been having this negative effect on the current markets. It's a reminder of how complex, how fickle the markets can be. As long as these conditions persist, I think that we're going to continue to see this uncertainty. And of course, that translates into the shaky markets that we're seeing right now. In a recent discussion regarding the impact of Canada's new federal budget, Bank of Canada Governor Tiff Macklem, he clarified that the budget, in his opinion, won't significantly affect Canada's economic course, at least in the short term. Um, during his talk at the International Monetary Fund's spring meeting in Washington, Macklem said that he appreciated the government's adherence to fiscal guidelines, which he says limits government debt and deficits. I guess you can have your own interpretation of that. He says that despite the infusion of around $53 billion in new spending over the next five years, he suggested that this budget balanced additional expenditures with incoming revenues. Thereby, he says it stabilizes the immediate economic influence. He says at a macro level, there's more money going out, there's more money coming in. He also touched on the government's recent economic measures and the effects that they're having. And he noted that the budget's fiscal trajectory remains largely unchanged from previous forecasts. He says that with new spending measures that are offset by increased revenues from stronger economic growth, and of course the higher capital gains taxes that companies and uh, affluent individuals are facing now will be a balancing act there. He says that it is essential to maintain the economic stability without adding unnecessary inflationary pressures. He said on net, the fiscal track has not substantially changed relative to the fall economic statement. So different measures can have different fiscal multipliers, but at first order, it doesn't look like a big change. Now regarding inflation, Macklem highlighted the latest data indicating a move towards the bank's 2% range. He suggests that there's potential easing in interest rates if this trend continues. The bank has kept the rate, of course, now at 5% since last summer, and this is a continuation of its cautious approach to monetary policy. Um, also, Macklem discussed the broader implications of international developments and monetary policies. 
and he emphasized the autonomy that's provided by Canada's uh, flexible exchange rate system. And he argues that this system allows Canada to tailor its monetary policy to local economic conditions. He says the adjustments have been relatively smooth. The international monetary system from that perspective is working well. And I think as long as countries continue to have sound fundamentals, we continue to communicate clearly that will continue. So to wrap this up here, the federal budget obviously does introduce new elements into Canada's fiscal landscape, but its overall impact on the macroeconomical stability appears to be minimal, at least according to Tiff Macklem. Harvest is pleased to announce the launch of the Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF, H-I-N-D, on the TSX. For the most part, when you think of industrial companies, they are companies that manufacture machinery, handheld tools, industrial products, but the sector also includes aerospace, defense firms, as well as companies that are engaged in transportation and logistics services. In 2023, the U.S. manufacturing industry capitalized on three key legislations from 2021 and 2022, focusing on infrastructure, clean energy, and the semiconductor development with aims to bolster job growth and foster workplace equity. These new laws have had an impact across various sectors, including semiconductors, clean energy components, electric vehicles, batteries, and the constituent parts and raw materials of these products. Now, HIND, it seeks to tap into the manufacturing industry as it is poised to benefit from the passing of these acts. And indeed, the legislation has already spurred record private sector investment in the manufacturing space. HIND, it will seek to provide unit holders with the opportunity for capital appreciation and monthly cash distributions to achieve the distributions and to help lower volatility. HIND will employ a covered call writing strategy on up to 33% of the portfolio securities. The Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF, it seeks to provide investors exposure to industrial leaders that drive innovation with steady monthly income. You can learn more about the Harvest Industrial Leaders Income ETF, HIND, on the TSX by visiting the link in the description of this video. The EV market is sure facing a lot of challenges these days, and we see Tesla at the forefront of a downturn that's signaling more broad industry troubles. As I mentioned earlier, shares of Tesla are down around 42% so far in 2024. I have no doubt that the EV market represents a massive opportunity for growth, but the sector has run into significant challenges. I want to look at a few of those here. First of all, I want to look at the slump in demand and surplus inventory. So we've seen recently um, the EV market has experienced this significant downturn in demand that is evidenced by Tesla's announcement of both a workforce reduction recently and a surplus of nearly 50,000 unsold vehicles. And this decline in demand it's particularly notable as it marks Tesla's first delivery drop in four years. And again, that indicates sort of a broader industry challenge beyond just one company. The surplus inventory poses a financial burden on manufacturers, suggests a mismatch between the production capacity and consumer demand. Uh, also, delayed projects and layoffs by major automakers. So major automakers like Ford are facing delays in their EV projects, and this signals a lack of confidence in the immediate profitability of EVs. And these delays not only delay the expansion of the EV offerings, but they also result in layoffs. And this reflects the need for companies to reassess their strategies, adjust their workforce accordingly. The decision to delay projects, lay off workers, it suggests that these auto manufacturers are taking a more cautious approach in the EV market amid these uncertainties and worries about future profitability. Also financial struggles of some of the EV companies. We've seen companies like Fisker and Rivian, they indicate broader challenges again within the industry. Fisker is teetering right now on the brink of bankruptcy being delisted from stock exchanges and these types of problems highlight the financial instability facing many EV manufacturers. If we look at the root causes of the slowdown, you hear things cited like higher prices, range anxiety, maintenance costs are also identified as root causes that are contributing to this industry-wide slowdown in the EV adoption. Electric vehicles generally cost more than their gas or hybrid counterparts. This makes them less accessible to the broader consumer base. Range anxiety or the fear of you know, running out of a battery charge before you reach your destination or your charging station. This remains today a significant hurdle for a potential EV buyers. Then also a higher maintenance costs associated with EVs. And we're seeing companies like the recent selling of EVs by companies like Hertz. These are coming to light um, as the industry is developing. And lastly, we're seeing intensifying price competition. We see this this morning, Tesla announced uh, aggressive pr price cuts in some of their major markets like China, Germany, 
and the U.S. And again, this just reflects a growing trend of intensifying price competition within the overall EV market. So there's lots to think about in this space. The issues that we're seeing coming to light today just exacerbate these challenges that they are being faced by the EV manufacturers who are already struggling with financial instability in many cases. And of course, this broad market uncertainty. Bitcoin has now completed its 2024 halving event, which a lot of experts are predicting could help boost the price of their value. The halving event, which is an event that occurs every four years approximately, it reduces the number of Bitcoins entering into circulation. And the idea here is that the scarcity could potentially increase the coin's value due to the, you know, the basic economic uh, principle of supply and demand. So what happens here is following the halving, the reward for Bitcoin miners drops. And in this case, it's decreased from 6.25 to 3.125 Bitcoins per mine blocked. So when, when Bitcoin was first created, miners got a stash of 50 tokens when they solved the formula. That was cut to 2025 in the first halving back in 2012, then to 12 and a half in 2016. Since 2020, it stood at 6.25 tokens. That of course is until Friday when the latest halving concerned. So this means that miners will now receive 3.125 tokens after solving the complicated math formulas that they need to do um, as miners. The context here of this having is quite different now from past ones. And this is due to a significant increase in the adoption of Bitcoin. And since the 2020 having, we've seen awareness of Bitcoin not only spread amongst the general public worldwide, but also and critically here among large financial entities. The, the Wall Street firms that have started to invest in Bitcoins have begin, begun offering a various investment products that are tied to it. And this broader market acceptance, it's sort of helped with uh, Bitcoin's price surge to new highs. Now, a key factor in the discussion that is deliberately built into the system is the number of Bitcoins that can ever exist. And this supply is capped theoretically at 21 million. Uh, so far, there have been uh, over 19 million tokens uh, created. So the halving here effectively increases the time that it will take to reach that 21 million limit that also intends to increase Bitcoin's value. Time will only tell what the impact on the price will be of this halving. The energy consumption issues is a topic that has yet to be decided. This weekend, the next edition of our Pulse newsletter will be sent out. I will put a link in the description of this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on Wednesday.